How do bees make honey? Unlike many other bees, honeybee species don't hibernate in winter. Instead, they stay active in their hives. During the coldest months, honeybees cluster together to keep warm and survive on the sweet substance that they have been hoarding for weeks in advance. That substance is honey. All of the bees in a hive benefit from the honey hull, but the job of honey production lies with the female worker bees, according to biologists at Arizona State University. These forager bees fill their stomachs with nectar from flowers before returning to the hive to convert it into honey. Male honeybees, which make up about 10% of the hive population, spend their lives eating this honey, before leaving the hive to mate. There are many factors that determine how much honey a single bee colony will need to produce for a winter period. It depends on the climate where the bees live. How much ventilation the hive has, the number and kind of bees in the hive, honeybees will continue to make honey until every cell in their hive is full. When produced, honey is very long-lasting. Honeybees reduce the water content in honey and add sugar, which greatly limits the ability of bacteria and other microorganisms to grow in it and spoil it, before nectar becomes honey, it enters a bee's stomach. An enzyme in bees' stomachs, called glucose oxidase, breaks down the nectar and helps produce the honey. Honeybee anatomy. A honeybee's anatomy is adapted to collect and transfer honey. In hive production, a bee may need to visit over 1,000 flowers before its honey stomach is completely full. When this is achieved it will return to the hive to begin the honey-making process. The bee then regurgitates the nectar from the honey stomach, and it is passed from mouth to mouth between the hive's bees to reduce its moisture content. Each bee chews the nectar for about half an hour. Sometimes, the nectar can be placed into an empty cell, before it is passed to another bee. A hive can be over 91 degrees Fahrenheit 33 degrees Celsius, helping some of the moisture evaporate from the nectar while it is stored. When the nectar's moisture content is reduced from 70% to about 20%, it becomes honey, the honey is stored in cells within the hive until it is needed. As new bee larvae grow in separate brood cells, honey cells are filled with honey in preparation for the new bee's arrival. When bee larvae have grown and hatch from their cells, honeybees feed them with the energy-rich honey they have collected. The honey is mixed with pollen to form bee bread for extra nutrients, protein, carbohydrates, fat, minerals and antioxidants. Should we harvest honey? To produce the honey found in supermarkets, beekeepers harvest the honey made from bees in artificial hives. This process is a widely debated topic. How does keeping bees impact honey production, the environment and the bees themselves? Bees can produce more honey than they need to sustain their colony over the winter period. So, many beekeepers believe that using the excess for human benefit causes little harm to the bees' welfare. Others claim that the bees are overworked as they have to make up extra volumes of honey to replace what's taken. In addition, when bees' honey is taken and replaced with a sugar alternative, bees aren't getting the same nutrition as wild honeybees. As bees search for nectar, hairs on their bodies brush flowers and pick up pollen. When flying between plants, the bees transfer the pollen and help flower species to reproduce. This is why it is beneficial to protect bee populations. Harvesting honeybees increases the number of bees in an area, but because these domesticated bees compete with other native bee species, flower resources become limited and can eventually cause other bee species to die out. Different bee species target specific flowers, and so a balance of honeybees and other species is essential in the long-term survival of plant and insect species. Honeybees are amazing insects for many reasons. Their complex social life, along with their elaborate foraging mechanisms allows them to stand out among other bees. Though they may be viewed as pests in the eyes of many, honeybees should be appreciated for all that they do to keep our ecosystem running. Next time you try to swat a honeybee, remember where your honey is coming from. And if you learned something in this video, don't forget to hit that like button and share with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe for more updates.